Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be having a really interesting discussion because I want to talk about the perfect eyeshadow palette. I want to talk about could the ideal eyeshadow palette exist? Does it already exist? If it does, what would it be? If it does not, what would the closest palette that we could get be? And my inspiration for this topic actually came from reading your comments in one of my recent videos. I did a video where I covered up the pops of color in hyped up eyeshadow palettes and I had so much fun filming that video. So if you haven't seen it, I'll leave it linked down below. But I really enjoyed reading your comments because you guys had some very interesting points to share talking about whether or not the pops of color are important whether or not the other shades that aren't pops of color are important, what you feel that you need in a palette, what other people feel they need in a palette, and just kind of what all of our different preferences are. And it got me thinking, with so many different people, with so many different preferences, different skin tones, different lifestyles, is it possible to have one perfect eyeshadow palette? And I want to break that down in today's video and talk about my thoughts. So if you're interested, definitely stay tuned. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I do upload five days a week, Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. Eastern. But for now, let's hop into the discussion. First of all, I do want to say my lighting's a little weird today because Tilly broke one of my light bulbs. She knocked it over to the floor and it shattered everywhere. And I'm waiting for a replacement bulb that should be here any day now. But Let's hop into this and I want to break down my thoughts kind of in three ways. So there are essentially three different things that kind of fall into play on whether or not there could be the ideal eyeshadow palette. Now the first one is that there are kind of two types of people when it comes to preferences at least. There's people that want a one and done palette that has everything they need and then there are other people who are willing to pull from some other palettes. So that's the first kind of debate. The second one, and one of the biggest reasons that it's hard to create a perfect eyeshadow palette is just because we all have different skin tones. So a palette that's gonna be ideal on my skin tone might show up very light and ashy on someone with a very deep skin tone, but a palette that has a lot of very deep, dark tones to it would be beautiful and give a lot of variety to someone with a very deep skin tone, but on my skin tone, a lot of the shades will probably look the same. So that's another struggle. And the last one is the kind of debate between whether or not a palette needs to be unique and something different, or whether or not a palette should be something wearable in every day. And wearable in every day is gonna be different for everyone, but I think that's kind of the basis of that third debate. So first of all, like I said, the debate between having everything you need in one eyeshadow palette or just having shades that are new and different. So to kind of break that down, what I mean, here's an example, this is the Modern Renaissance palette. Now, someone who wants a one and done palette is gonna kind of have a list of demands for their eyeshadow palette. The first one is gonna be a shade to lay down your eyeshadow primer. So that would be this shade right here, Tempura. There is a train going by if you can hear that. But the next thing that I typically see asked for is a transition shade. Now keep in mind, a transition shade could be anything. It literally just means a shade that helps you transition into the other ones. But typically the one that is most commonly asked for is kind of a shade like this, golden ochre if you're very light, but maybe if you're a little bit deeper, the shades raw sienna or burnt orange could be a transition. Or if you have a very dark skin tone, perhaps something more like real gar or even darker. We also hear people say they need that light shimmer shade. So that's gonna be one of these two right here and that would be used for your inner corner highlight or your brow bone highlight. And then finally, a common request is a dark shade, usually a black to kind of ground the palette, help deepen up some other shades. In this particular palette, it is a dark brown. So right there, that's already four shades that are kind of requirements. So if you're looking at a standard 10 to 12 pan eyeshadow palette, you already have either a third or almost a half of the palette kind of decided for you and then the rest doesn't leave you too much room to play. So if you're someone who wants all of those different things in one palette, you are going to kind of be sacrificing a little bit of variety from the other shades, unless you're looking for a very large palette that maybe has 25 to 35 pans in it. Now, personally, I don't think there's anything wrong with wanting everything in one eyeshadow palette. Personally, I don't mind reaching into a few other palettes. For me, I can usually set down my 
uh, eyeshadow primer, which is the powder I used on my face. I can highlight my inner corner with my highlighting shade, but I don't think there's anything wrong with asking for those colors to be in a palette, but it definitely kind of sparks the debate whether or not these are necessary or whether or not we would rather have a palette. Oh my gosh, this train. <laughs> you guys, let me just tell you, I'm struggling to film today. I have been sitting in this exact spot for over 30 minutes just waiting for silence because there are like people in the hallway talking and screaming and then finally when they calmed down a little bit, all the trains started to come by. I waited for a 20 minute train and I thought he was done and then his friend came by, so. But I definitely think, especially through reading your comments in that video that I brought up, that seems to be the biggest discussion about a perfect eyeshadow palette is there are some people who are like i need to have these colors for it to be perfect and there are other people that are like don't put those in my palette i already have those in another palette don't be wasting eyeshadows that i already have so that makes it very challenging in itself and the second point like i said is that we all have different skin tones so a palette that might be perfect for me might be way too light for somebody else and vice versa so that's definitely another challenge and the final one, I think, is another very talked about debate right now, is whether or not a palette needs to be appropriate for everyday wear, whether it needs to be quote unquote wearable, or whether it should be unique and something we've never seen before. Because sometimes it feels like you can't win. If you come out with a palette that's so unique that we've never seen before, you'll have people saying, oh, well, I can't really wear that. I don't have a use for that. I'm not gonna be able to put that on my eyes every day. And then vice versa, you come out with a palette that's predictable, it's something we've seen before, you're gonna please some people, but other people are gonna be pretty disappointed with it because they're like, hello, we've done that a million times, what are we doing? So the more that I think about whether or not there is a perfect palette that could be perfect for everyone out there, I don't really think that there is a palette. However, I kinda wanna touch on some palettes that are like close to perfect, that a lot of people might describe as perfect and the palettes that I think they're the most acceptable all around. We're like, okay, most people would like this. And the first one that comes to mind is the Modern Renaissance palette, the one that I was using for an example. And for this one, I would say two years ago, a lot of people would have described it as a perfect palette. In 2018, it's a common color story, so it's not quite as widely loved as it once was, but at the time, I think a lot of people would have regarded this as a perfect palette, because not only does it have all those shades that we talked about that for a lot of people may or may not be a deal breaker to have, but it also, it gives you some pops, it gives you some variety, it's a mix of warm tones and cool tones, so I think at one point, this could have been considered maybe a perfect palette. I think in 2018, if I had to survey people and ask, what is the closest thing to a perfect palette that we have right now? I think a lot of people would probably say the Born to Run palette. Now, this is a newer release from Urban Decay. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you. Kelly Gooch does not think this is a perfect palette. For me, this isn't even one of my favorite palettes, oddly enough. I like it, I get good use out of it, the quality is nice, I can see why people love it, but I don't really see it as a must-have for me. However, I'm obviously not, I don't, I don't represent everyone, and I think the reason a lot of people might regard this as a perfect palette is because, again, it checks most of the boxes that we talked about, but it also gives you a lot of pops. It gives you some fun to have variety. But, like we mentioned earlier, there is a trade-off with that. There is a trade-off with having both variety and the staple shades to ground your palette. And that trade-off is that this palette is gigantic. I mean, it's not the biggest palette out there, but it's very large. It's not necessarily super tiny and curated. It definitely is a bit of everything. Another palette that kind of falls under that same theme and I think has a very similar look to the Born to Run palette is this new palette from Sigma. Well, it's newer. It's their Dream palette. Now this, just like the Born to Run palette, it's pretty big. Very bulky, takes up a lot of space. So again, through having all of these shades that you might want, there is that trade-off of having a pretty gigantic palette. So I would say right now in 2018, those might be a few of the palettes. Oh my gosh, can you hear Cass? I'm pretty positive that Cass's snoring is uh, audible on camera right now. So if you can hear that and you think that's a human snoring, that's actually my 
17 pound dog that's making all that noise. But even though I don't think there's one universally perfect palette for everyone, I do think it's possible to have a palette that is perfect for you. And through breaking down all the different scenarios that we talked about in this video, I think it's easy to kind of figure out what is a necessity to you, what's something that, can you hear him? <laughs> what's something that you could skip over and still love a palette? And I think that it's possible to have a perfect palette for you out there that's already made, but if you can't find one, one thing that I always love to bring up is that you can make your own perfect palette. Single eyeshadows honestly are your best friend, and this is a palette that I created. I wouldn't say that this color story is my perfect color story, but if I was looking for like blues and purples, I think that it's beautiful and it's a wonderful quote on color story to play around with so if you don't feel that there's a palette out there that fits all of your needs and that's perfect for you absolutely create it and finally one thing i wanted to talk about is whether or not palettes can even be creative these days i think that's a huge struggle for brands is coming out with something that is innovative because so many things have been done in 2018 we have new eyeshadow palettes released weekly sometimes it feels like daily and while many of them have very wonderful curated color stories to them, it's hard to come up with something that is super innovative every single time. So they could come up with something that's beautiful and well done, but it's, just, it's a color palette that we've seen before. And it's hard to excite people with the amount of makeup that's being released. It's hard to come up with something unique. It's hard to come up with something that stands out. So I think that's another struggle for brands these days is to come out with something that's unique that people will still wear and people will still think makes sense because it's possible to come out with something that is so unique that people don't understand it. There are some color stories you look at and you're like, what were they doing? And that's another risk that you take when you're trying to be super unique. So I just kind of wanted to share my thoughts with you guys. I'm really interested to hear Can you hear him snoring? Can you hear my dog snoring right now? I'm really interested to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below because I think that you guys are going to have some really wonderful insight to add to this conversation. I want to hear, do you think that it's possible to have a perfect palette? Honestly, I don't. I think that it's possible to have a palette that's perfect for you, but to have a palette that's going to be universal for everyone and that everyone is going to enjoy and love and work on their skin tone. That's tough. And another thing I didn't even really bring up in the video is just different skill levels because there are some people who want something a little bit softer and a little bit more sheer, which for someone extremely familiar with eyeshadow who practices every day and is very technical and very skilled, you might look at a sheer eyeshadow and think, what is this? I want maximum pigmentation. But that maximum pigmentation is not going to be as user friendly for a beginner. So that creates another debate within itself of what, what do we want? Want something that's crazy pigmented or do we want something that's more buildable? So I think to be a perfect palette, you really, it's nice to meet in the middle, which is why I think the Born to Run might be one of the closest things we have right now to a, a perfect palette because it's, it's not so sheer that you can't work with it, but it's also not so pigmented that it's tricky to use. It's like right in that middle point. But I want to hear from you guys. What do you think is the closest we could get to a perfect palette? Or if you do think there is a such thing, let us know down below. What do you think is a perfect palette or is close to a perfect palette? Or maybe what is perfect for you and your lifestyle? So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up, but definitely leave me your thoughts down below. I cannot wait to read the comment section from this video. If you enjoyed it and you found it entertaining, please give it a thumbs up so I know that you liked it. As I said, the original video that inspired this, the video where we covered up pops of color, is going to be in the description box. So if you haven't seen it, definitely check that out. But I will see you guys tomorrow at 9 a.m. Eastern. Bye.